Hi all, just a little update for R2. Um, I've got the uh, new lighting system that's arrived for uh, R2's dome or head. Um, these are, I always thought they were pronounced teaks, but uh, apparently everyone, certainly everyone in America, pronounces them teases. Um, T double E C E S, I think it is. Anyway, however you pronounce it, they're brilliant. I love them. Um, I'll just give you a little quick demo. I've just hooked them up. These are um, sort of just to, to fit them inside the dome, and there's going to be a, a nice sort of um, diffuser going over those. Uh, and then there's some nice bezels downstairs and um, quite a bit of detail, which will go on the outside of these to make them look nicer. This is just the bare boards, basically. And I'm just going to hook them up to a battery for now uh, and show you what they do. So you'll see this one says R2D2 and that one actually says Astromech, although it's a little bit um, bright for the camera. And the one at the back, I don't know if you noticed, it said may the force be with you scrolling across. So we've got the two logic displays for the front, which are a lot more bulbs than I was able to do. I did a homemade version of this. It was passable, but it wasn't quite the same. It wasn't anywhere near the same, actually. Um, these are beautifully done. They're all... Um, nicely made up, professionally made up, um, a lot neater than I could do. There's no way I could put that many LEDs and get them soldered up that neatly together and same with there. Um, so that's for the rear logic display, this is the front logic display. Now this can be programmed to say whatever you like. Um, I'll just show you that opening bit again. This one, the, the blue and white, they're a little bit bright to actually make out with a camera. Unfortunately, the camera overexposes. Um, I don't know how to uh, make that drop down a bit. I'll probably have to do a video again in daylight um, under electric light here. Um, so we've got the all three logic displays, and then of course we've got the um, PCIs or the process state indicators. One at the front, one at the back. So the front one, which cycles red to blue and the back on which cycles yellow to green and back again. Now the, one of the clever things that you may notice is on R2, in the uh, original R2 anyway, the way they did this is they had a, a, a light behind a colour wheel and Kenny Baker would move this little wheel from red to blue basically and as a result you'd see a line go pass across the light. So it would be red that side blue that side, red that side. So you always have this this impression of something moving across and sometimes you actually, if you look in the pictures of screenshots, you'll actually see it blue to here and then the last little bit red where the line of the colour wheel didn't quite clear the window. So it would be sort of like that, it would be a bit of both. And the programmer for these has simulated that. They don't just go from green to yellow and blue to red instantly they actually wash across whatever it's going to do it next there we go it washes across from one side to the other and then back again so it, it's actually emulating that color wheel that Kenny Baker used to move from side to side how cool is that I'm really chuffed with those they're superb Let's see what they're like with the big light out sorry about the noise I've got the um, the 3d printer is printing another part for R2 uh, they look too bright in that light, don't they? But it gives you an idea. So you've got the colours for the PSIs, and then you've got all of these. And once they're mounted up in the head, they're going to look pretty cool, I reckon. Okay, this is the other thing that's come this week. I've got the, again, professionally made lighting kits for both the charge bay and the data port. So that's the data panel. Again, beautifully made up, nice bit of printed circuit board. Uh, it's all running off of an Arduino, which is running both of these, and they're daisy chained together. 
and this is the charge bay which we see in Empire Strikes Back when uh, Luke lands on Dagobah and R2 uh, and Luke are at the campfire just when they meet Yoda for the first time and uh, Luke says, hey R2, do you want some power? And he opens up a little door and that's what we see inside. Now, uh, the guy who's made this, again, has been rather brilliant, I reckon, because they're not just flashing lights. Now, if I can get in there, you can see there's a red, green and yellow in the charge bay indicator lights. And they're not just flashy, flashy lights like all the others are. The others are just flashing patterns, basically, to look like it's doing something. But that is actually hooked up I was going to say hooked up to the battery, of course it's hooked up to the battery, otherwise it wouldn't work. But it's also got a voltage detector on it. So it's actually measuring and reading back the current state of the 12 volt battery. So you'll see it's got red is on permanently, yellow is on permanently, at the moment green is flashing. That means it's not quite at full charge. If it was full charge the green would be on solidly. But with the, uh, with the flashing green it means it's just slightly off of full charge and uh, they should change as the battery state changes. So one thing I've really decided on this build, I've mentioned a few times now, is I'm not doing uh, and I started, I started using MDF and I started using um, you know some 3D printed parts and I'm still using some 3D printed parts, don't get me wrong they're really good um, in fact, I've still got the uh, the skirt is 3D printed and some of the bits and pieces inside that are going to hold the electronics are going to be 3D printed. But I've decided, um, once I saw some of the droids that were really all made out of aluminium and, you know, things like this. Um, like I say, the, the circuit board's all been specially made. I don't know if I can show you the other one. The other one fits in rather neatly. It's all sort of fits neatly and snugly up to the back of the, the panel there. So... It just looks so much more, I think, better than the, the ones I originally came up with. I mean, I came up with these, if you remember, which, you know, they're okay. They work, um, and they were, they were, they were pretty good. But uh, it, it's just a bit of a difference to the to the ones I've got upstairs. All right, there's a bit of a bit of a cost difference as well. But um, I just I just do think if you if you're going to do one of these, yeah, obviously you can do it on a budget, but um, if you want to do it, you know, one that looks really, really good, then this is a good way to go. I'm really chuffed with this. God knows how I'm going to pay for it all, but I'm pretty chuffed with it. It is turning into a bit of an obsession now. To take on a project like this, it needs to be a bit of an obsession, otherwise you'd never get it done. Um, but uh, I'm hoping, once it's all finished, it may take years, but once it's all finished, it's going to look pretty good. And I'm hoping it's going to put a lot of smiles on a lot of faces. So um, I'm hoping it'll all be worth it. Anyway, that's the uh, update for now. Uh, oh, I can show you a couple of other bits. The, uh, the lighting kit I just showed you upstairs for the dome. These are, they've got, plate, they've got paper on them at the moment. You know, so these are actually just a acrylic clear sheet. Um, and these are aluminium bezels, which basically will fit in here, behind obviously. And then those lights that I just showed you upstairs will will be in there and again that will that will really tidy that up but if you look at the ones that I did I managed to get three rows of LEDs in there um, and on the real thing we had a lot more so there's five rows so it's quite a bit of a difference that's a lot more dense and you can really spell out words on this you couldn't really do it on on that one so much so anyway anyway that's pretty much it for now I think um, I've also got some kind of snazzy lights that are bought which are going to light these up inside so they're like given animated um instead of one light in there like i had before there's going to be about i think it's about six they're um neopixel discs and uh each one has uh, a load of leds on it and they're animated so it's meant to look like a flickering projector and they can change colors although most of the time they're sort of a bluey white color so um yeah so r2's coming on um I will do an update on BB soon. BB, as you can see, um, that's the original sphere for the frame skeleton. I'm actually working on a thinner, lighter one um, because that's kind of thick, uh, which is a bit of an issue with the magnets. Uh, and it's heavier. This is going to be thinner and lighter, so it will help with the magnets and uh, be a bit lighter at the same time. So, 
but this guy's uh, sort of got more of my attention at the moment. But uh, uh, and that's mainly because a lot of it's already done. It's out there. It's been tried and tested for years. A lot of the BB stuff is still work in progress. You know, when it comes to the drivetrain, the uh, the mechanics inside, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of development still to do. Whereas with R2, he's 40 years old. There's been a lot of development done. So. Um, it's easy to get straight in and, and build in. Anyway, that's it for now. Talk to you later. Okay, so we're painting again. Um, one little tip for anyone who's um, building a an R2 a little bit, who you know, may have started after me. Um, have more patience than I've had. I've forever been wanting to see what things are going to look like and uh, don't want to wait, so I start putting things together and before you know it you've done something and you wish you'd done it a different way and one of the things I've done differently is I wish I hadn't stuck all the panels that I have, I haven't got all of them stuck on yet but I've got some and I wish I hadn't stuck them on yet because I would be able to do the, the, the final paint much much easier um, and also I've stuck the outer dome onto the inner dome far too soon because there's other things I needed to do so um, yeah <laughs> not enough research a little too much impatience um, but uh, anyway, I'll get there. It's just that um, uh, I didn't go about it the best way. But we learn something new every day when we're doing this. But uh, if you if you're just starting with an alley dome, there's a few things that um, you need to know basically, and that is that uh, with me, uh, like I say, I stuck the outer dome on too soon. Um, before I could really put all the hinge panels on they should have been screwed and bolted through the inner dome but I can't do that now because I put the outer dome on too quickly um, and I've glued some of the side panels on so I'm not even sure I can one of the tricks is you heat up the outer dome and it should expand slightly and it's easy to pop off the inner dome but because I've glued in some of the side panels the side doors around here I don't think I'd be able to do that now so um, just a little a little word of advice take your time see how the other guys are doing it and avoid the uh, the mistakes I've made okay this is uh, a color I'm trying out for R2 this is um, Citroen Poseidon blue uh, I've got the uh, I was reading a, reading something on the forum the other day where uh, people were discussing the colors and uh, this one was suggested and I like I think that's pretty good actually I think that could just be the colour, folks. So uh, I'll give it another coat in a bit and then we'll give it a clear coat of lacquer as well and um, see what the finished result is. Hi all, small update on R2. Um, this is something I've drawn in CAD. It's uh, basically uh, just a ring which is going to support the PSI, uh, or both PSIs in R2's dome, front and rear. Um, so that's the drawing, it's really just basically when you get the teeses, the teases, I think it's pronounced, it's either teeks or teases, I think it's teases, uh, the light kit from the RGD to Builders Club, uh, it comes with a tubing which is just nicely sized for the circuit boards, you do actually have to sand down the edge of the circuit boards to make it fit snugly but uh, I've done that already, so the idea of this is I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to glue them in full time as it were permanently uh, because I'm imagining I may need to take them out from time to time so the idea is I'll have an adapter ring which is this which I will glue to the inside of the dome unfortunately as it's my first droid uh, I didn't realize the best order to do things and I realize now it would have been best to get all the fittings in and screw drilled and screwed to the inner dome before I added the outer dome. Unfortunately, I was impatient, didn't know any better, so I've I've just added the outer dome. So I've no longer got the option to drill the inner dome and screw things through. So I have to rely on glue and other bits and pieces. So the idea is this will glue to the inside of the dome, and the tube with the PSI will fit inside it. It's a snug fit, and the lens is a, a tight interference fit on the um, on the outside on the outer dome. And what I might do is just put a couple of holes through here and have a couple of screws which will go in and just tighten on the on the tube inside. It depends if it's needed. So that's the CAD. This is one being drawn, or being printed I should say. Drawn. Um, so this is the other one being printed and the other one is actually in the dome which I'll show you now. Okay, so this is the dome. Let me just put the light on. It's getting very dull. 
I think it's going to rain out there. Okay, so you can just see, and that's what I've done. So that's the uh, the sort of the front PSI. I say it's not done properly as the a lot of the aluminium ones are done because that should really have been fitted to the inner dome before I fitted the outer. But there we go. It's too late now. So the idea is that that ring there is the thing you've just seen me draw in CAD or so me show you in CAD and the other ones on the printer. That's the piece that comes with the lighting kit and I've 3D printed some clear lenses which are an interference fit. There's one for the front and the back. You can see the back on there as well. Same thing, interference fit. I may try and replace them later with something a bit smoother but they do look quite nice when they're lit because the, the lights diffuse quite nicely. So I should certainly take the I've, I've repainted the eyepiece and got a lovely finish. I should take it off really so I don't scratch it up. Um, so this is what I've ended up with the uh, the adapters that are made up for the PSIs. Uh, we've got the original one that I originally had this one on the front, which is a much wider ring. Um, that's now at the back because there's plenty of room around it. The one at the front, I realised that I couldn't do. I had to do a much thinner adapter ring because I need to leave room for the um, hollow projector next to it. They were going to come very, very close together. Um, but those now have glued nicely. This is um, sort of the next day. Um, so these, are, these, these rings are now glued on nicely and the inside pieces can be twisted out um, if I need to do anything with them. So might change and they don't look too bad actually they look really nice when lit as I said earlier um, and you may be able to see I've got one of the panels in which hopefully I'm gonna have a servo on each door and then I'll be able to open and close but uh, there's gonna be quite a, quite a lot of work to do to get all that sorted but anyway so there you go um, just thought I'd show you the new lighting and uh, progress on the dome and uh, I think that's probably going to be it for this video so um, thanks for watching and uh, hope it's interesting hope it's helpful and um, take care and I'll catch you next time